queens and in-betweens and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Caitlin and I started a series called BSN With Me, which is basically become a nurse with me, but BSN With Me. So my last video was dedicated to how to pass the HESI and this video is dedicated to everyone's favorite class in the whole entire world, anatomy. So my first tip is super basic, go to class. But if you can't go to class right now because Miss Renna kicked you out, you can still watch the lecture videos. And make sure that you don't fall behind on the lecture videos. Make sure you stay up to date. Take notes on what is being said instead of what is on the PowerPoints or in the textbooks because you can always refer back to that later on. My teacher would test us on stuff that she said in class just to see who's actually going to class rather than staying home and look at the PowerPoints. So I'm gonna show you my in-class notes just to show you how I do it. And I don't know if you can see it, but I promise you they are there. People normally think that I'm just doodling or coloring, but each color means something. And that helps me because I'm a visual learner and like each color representing something sticks in my head better. So something that I would do would be I would go home after class and rewrite my notes just to refresh on what I learned that day. And also to take out all the extra words and just write down stuff that I need to know that are important. So here's what I would do. I don't know if you can see these words, but they're there. And then here's the next page. Also, I like to have a study group. And my study group didn't really have healthy study habits. We would go to the library from around eight o'clock at night and leave at three in the morning, which is not necessary at all. But personally, it's easier for me to study at nighttime rather than during the day because something about the night is just so motivational. Something my study group would do would be to just read through the book and ask random questions as we go through. So I'm going to do an example. I have my book right here and I'm going to ask y'all questions. Y'all can answer in the comments if you want to. So what is the function of the hypodermis? What is a Langerhans cell? What cell is a touch receptor? And that's just what we would do going through page, flip, Next page, read through, ask questions. Another thing that my group would do would be to assign each other a topic and we would get a whiteboard and write down information about that topic and just teach it to each other. If you don't have a study group because Miss Corona, you can always write down what you need to know in a piece of paper and just teach it to your wall, teach it to your fish, to your pillows. The action of saying it out loud helps information stick better in my head and maybe in your head too. I also like to make up mnemonics. I would make up the most random things ever and just say the words, like whatever pops up in my head and that would be our go-to mnemonic. For example, if you're trying to remember monosaturides, go find good dogs rapidly, except we didn't use the word dogs. For me personally, I think the more inappropriate a mnemonic is, the easier it is to remember. And a good example of that would be the 12 cranial nerves. What we learn in school is, I gotta get my book for this cause that's how hard it is for you to remember this one. Old Opie occasionally tries trigonometry and feels very gloomy, vague, and hypoactive. That never stuck in my head, but what did stick in my head was oh, 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 to touch and feel virgin girls' vaginas. Ah, heaven. So if remembering trigonometry helps you remember the cranial nerves, then you can go for it. But if remembering other things that are inappropriate helps you remember it, then you can go for that too. Another new mind that I like to use was for the anterior pituitary hormones which was Frank likes taking showers so that he appears clean, tall, handsome, and professional. I also like going to Pinterest just for ideas to remember things and see how other people like wrote down stuff or mnemonics that they used. I just used that. I also took a medical terminology class which helped me so much with anatomy because I learned parts of the body as prefixes. I learned processes as suffixes and it helps me put words together that I don't know. Which brings me to another tip, which is learning parts of the body. So for example, knowing that soma means body, knowing that nef means the kidneys. It's also helpful if you can memorize what things look like. For example, knowing what ramus is, fossa, foramen, foramina, crest, spine, process. This helped me whenever I got to my practicals. If I didn't know what a word was, I would know like what it is. So if it's a whole, I'd be like, okay, that's a foramen. Or if it's a projection, okay, that's a process. I also use flashcards and quizlets, so I would use flashcards on words to remember them. And Quizlet was good for practice practicals because they had pictures of models and then they would have arrows pointing to like parts of the bone, the muscle, uh, parts of the heart, and you just put the answer in. Another thing that I like to do for my practicals 
would be to label and erase. So if you don't have an iPad, what you can do is just get your lab book and put on a clear sheet of like screen protector on top of it and label and erase with Expo marker. But what I did, I would take pictures of my anatomy manual and I would just label and erase on my iPad. So this is an example of whenever I was learning the bones. So you zoom in, you see that I was labeling this skull going on to here. Then we have the scapula. But I would just label and erase and then move on to the next picture whenever I got one down and make sure that I keep refreshing so that I remember everything that I previously learned while I learn new material. Also, there is online websites that allow you to do mock practicals. If you search like labeling this, labeling the heart, labeling parts of the skeleton, they should pop up. Label and erasing helped me get an A in my first anatomy. However, I didn't do it as religiously as I did the first time for the second one. Plus we moved online for the coronavirus and I still got a B plus. So even if you slack off, which I'm not saying you should do because you shouldn't because we should all be getting A's, you should still get a decent grade. If spelling counts for your school like how it does for mine, I don't know how to pronounce half of those words. So I would just pronounce them however I spell them. It also helps for learning the muscles if you realize what the muscles are touching especially whenever it gets to the neck region because it gets super messy because you have the stylohyoid, omohyoid, thyroid hyoid. Just make sure you see what the muscles are touching in order to name them. If it's possible to go to open lab, make sure that you do so that you can spend as much time as possible with the models because that is what you're being tested on if you're still going to class. However, if you can't go to class, you can still go online and do mock practicals online or you can at least take pictures of your book and just keep labeling and erasing until you understand everything. I hope that you found at least one tip helpful and if you did make sure you comment down below which tip that was. Whenever I first saw like while I was learning in anatomy for example the veins, arteries, nerves, all the bones and muscles and stuff I got kind of freaked out but whenever I like broke things down and found my routine to study and learn the material I wasn't as freaked out and I still passed with high grades so hopefully you found something helpful and this gives you some insight on what to expect and how to study and comment down below what your favorite tip is that you think you'll be using in the future. Make sure that you thumbs up, subscribe, and I hope that you're ready to come on our with me.